very exciting week as we've had a number of brand and roster announcements. But in this episode, we're going to focus on things announced for the launch weekend as well as what's going on with Challengers. A lot of you have been asking about it, so here it is. Everything you need to know about Call of Duty Challengers coming right up. COD fans, welcome back. Good to see you. I hold shift with you. It's been a pleasure. Again, it's been a little bit scattered, and honestly, the videos are going to be even more scattered coming up the next week. I'll be in Dallas, essentially, from the 6th or so until about the 11th for the Ashoni event, the first local event that's going on, so make sure you're following along with Ashoni. But more importantly, I've had a lot of other things going on. If you missed it, I am also hosting a podcast through Checkmate Gaming called Off The Rip. We had our first episode happening on Monday. It was live, and they will continue to be live on Mondays at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. But if you want more Call of Duty conversation, whether you're on a longer drive, or if you're just trying to kill some time, or if you're like me, you're doing different things, you just want something in the background, you can find at least the episode for now on YouTube by going to youtube.com slash Checkmate Gaming. It'll also be available on Google Play Podcasts as well as iTunes Podcasts as soon as the show gets fully approved so more content coming through again if you want to keep in touch with me make sure you follow me on twitter uh, at i hold shift and if you're new to the channel and you like this style of video make sure you guys consider subscribing as i will be putting out very pertinent information videos as we get closer and closer to the season let's start things off get off the promotions get on to the topic challenger path to pro i've even still, I posted a video a couple of months ago, it feels like that at least, talking about what the Path to Pro might include, and I still get comments on a daily basis asking certain specific questions about the Challengers division and Path to Pro. So, the need is there, hopefully this answers your questions, if not, feel free to get into the comment section below and ask me, I'll be sure to get there and respond to you. Let's start things off with the most important core details. Call of Duty League, of course, 12 teams, Challengers division will be the official Path to Pro for amateurs and semi-pros alike. This does include... People that are signed on pro rosters but may have the tag as being a two-way player. We'll talk about that later. Let's talk about the requirements first. If you're familiar to any of the last essentially handful of years when it comes to GB's game battles, if you're familiar, unfamiliar with it, or how open events worked, it's the exact same system, just under a new brand, but with a ton more opportunity for more players and more teams to get noticed. Let's start with the core details. Like I mentioned, the prerequisites, you can only participate in Call of Duty Challengers if you are 18 and over. No underage players are going to be allowed. That's actually going to be a stipulation that's going to be held, I think, to a lot of local LAN events as well. So make sure you're kind of keeping yourself aware of that if you're somebody who's up and coming in the scene and not quite 18 yet. But more importantly, this is the question I get most. Shift, will I be able to play in the Challengers division on Xbox? Will I be able to play on PC with controller? The answer has officially been determined as no. The Challengers official rules have been put out. I'm going to roll through those as much as I possibly can, but it will be a PS4 only. You will have to link your PSN network account to the Game Battles account, which is where all of the Challengers events will be held. That brings me to my next point. What are the Challengers events? Now, we had kind of heard, at least in the initial release, I guess we'll call it, of the Challengers information, that there's going to be up to 26 events. That's been confirmed from different esports officials and operators, as well as admins that are involved with the CDL and Call of Duty as a whole when it comes to their esports functions. Possibility of 26 plus events, up to $1 million of total prize pooling going through. But the more important thing is that we're also getting more confirmation with the more recent official rules that there will be an outline for not only online tournaments and ladders, but also offline or land tournaments. Online will be like you know it from before Game Battles will be hosting 2K events and 1k events 2k events essentially mean that there will be 2000 challenger points on the line as well as two thousand dollars those will run up until january 18th now the expectation here is that we will get two per month as we had back in black ops 4 up until we get to january where they will cease to exist and then we'll switch to 1k events or 1000 pro points up for bats as well as one thousand dollars that'll happen up until july 18th that's only one of the ways that you can earn yourself challenger points. And before you ask, why do I need to earn those? I'll get to that here in a minute. Beyond that, though, you can also play in Game Battles Ladders weekly to earn a set determined threshold of points that will also accumulate towards your individual total points as you get ready to go for things like their open events that'll happen next. Now, again, that's where things come into play. Challengers points, what do they mean? Why do I need them? You will be able to accumulate those individually and tally those with your other teammates to give your team a total challenger points. 
The league will then look at their challenger points and will seed you accordingly for different open events that happen across the regular season of the CDL. Now, here's where things get super, super interesting. It has been read in this player official rules that the top 10 teams from North America, the top four teams from Europe, and the top two teams from the APAC will have travel and team pass compensation eligible for them. That's massive. Now, last year, if you remember how it worked, was that you had these GB2Ks and things like that, and then if you won one of those, you got qualified essentially instantly, but if you did not win one of those, you had to go through the national qualifiers that would happen, and the teams that finished and won at the national qualifying level got their stuff compensated for. So there was a United States qualifier, a Canada qualifier, a France, Italy, Germany, UK qualifier, Australia qualifier. Based on what I'm reading here, those will no longer exist, and whoever the top 10 teams are at a certain point will be the squads that get, from North America at least, will be the squads that get their travel compensated for. Same thing for the top four from Europe, same from the top two from APAC. The only reason why, and it doesn't say here in the official rules if there will be no national qualifiers, but the reason why I don't think there will be is if there are events every single weekend as we kind of anticipate when it comes to the regular season for the CDL, of which those events will periodically be holding the Challengers Division brackets, they wouldn't have time to run national qualifiers. Now, it does in fact say here in the rules that they will qualify for certain Call of Duty League hosted Challengers events. So we don't know how many, but if we were to just go ahead and guess that you got even sent to half of the events that are going to be happening, it's going to be difficult to have a national qualifier once every other week is what I would imagine. Now, here's the other bit of good news when it comes down to this. When we were talking on the Off The Rip podcast through Checkmate Gaming just on Monday with Nubsy and Easy Mac and Exceed, if there were 26 events, there's no way any amateur organization was going to be able to fund teams to every single one of those events happening. It's going to create a ton of hodgepodge as far as, well, these players can go, but we can't send them, so they're going to play with other people. It would have been an absolute disaster. But if this does, in fact, consist of the majority or at least, well, yes, at least the majority of events that happen for a challenger's team... That starts to become a different conversation pool because now you're going to be able to get compensation traveled for you. And top 10 teams from North America, I, I can think of maybe five that are super good right now, let alone the ones that get put together once they start getting through 2Ks and things of that nature. The top 10 teams... There weren't top there were not 10 teams from North America last year that stayed consistently good throughout the open events. Same thing from EU. I would say there were more than 4 from EU, but definitely not more than 10. And then from APAC, you essentially had two. So this feels like there's going to be a major opportunity for team owners and team managers to pick up squads, keep them through the entire year, have your brand recognized, your name recognized, your same team still installed as far as having a core roster instead of what was last year of, well, Aspire is this for this one event, but then a totally different set of five is Aspire for the next. It was very difficult to follow, so I'm hoping that this will help create a culture where players and teams will stick together, considering the fact that the top 10 squads will consistently be brought out to these open events. Events, and maybe there are only a handful that the orgs will have to be responsible buying team passes and flights for. But the good news is, with the CDL hosting these events, there's only two teams that are not essentially domestic to North America. So there's good news for North American players, a little bit less good news for EU because, again, teams like Divinely that came out of Germany and won their national qualifier time and time and time again... That'll be a little bit more difficult, I think, for them to break into the top four. But that's just kind of the conversation there as a whole. Now, this brings me to my last and final point when it comes to this video. Two-way players. We've gotten more rules as far as what will happen for two-way players. And this is an interesting conversation point simply due to the fact that we don't 100% know what the stipulation for how many players will be able to play on a certain point on each team. Now, it does say here for two-way players that you can have a maximum of four players per pro team as designated as two-way players during each split. So those players can switch from the first split to the second split. This essentially means that four substitute players per team could also play in the challenger's division. Now, what are the rules and stipulations for that moving forward? Two-way players are ineligible to compete in challengers if they appear in more than two 
Call of Duty League matches in a split. So again, it essentially gives you four per year, two per split. If you play in more than two, you can no longer play in challengers. Seems about right. That's essentially what Overwatch League has going for it right now, and it makes sense. But there's also the establishment of a contenders league, or at least it was up until this upcoming year, and players being able to play for their academy teams. And that brings me to my biggest question marks, and as far as where things get a little bit more gray area and vague for me, is the next couple of rules. A maximum of two designated two-way players from a single team may compete in any single challenger's match. So does that mean that if you are, say, for instance, Toronto, you have four two-way players, can you send two to one team and two to another because it says a single challenger's match? It feels like potentially yes, unless those teams play up against each other, and then in which case you'd have four players from a single team playing at a single challenger's match. So a little bit cloudy there, but I would go ahead and just guess that you're only allowed to have two of those players actively playing in a challenger's tournament at a time. Beyond that, though, since we don't know what it's going to look like for academy teams, and with these early 2K tournaments happening, is that going to mean that you can have two players from, say, Toronto and two players, say, from Paris playing on the same team as each other, giving you essentially four CDL players, substitutes at that nomenclature? playing on the same roster, that feels strange, especially if academy teams are not going to be nearly as widespread. You might have, like, you know, Sage Esports with players from Toronto and Minnesota and Paris all on the same team. Does that mean you – that just seems a little strange that that would be allowed. Um, there's no rule against it. The only other rule here, as far as I'm looking at in this official rule set, is that no player will be eligible to appear in both Challengers and Call of Duty League matches in the same week. So you can't play in both the CDL as well as in Challengers at the same time. But some big question marks there, and I think that uh, maybe there are some aspiring pros out there or Challengers players that are on substitute rosters that will be able to give me some clarification on it. But it seems a little strange that that would be allowed. But regardless, it's going to be an exciting year. A lot more opportunity for players at the top. If you're somebody who is still up and coming, you don't know how to find it team feel free to get down in the comment section below there's a number of discords that are out there that'll get you into potential scrim things also on checkmate gaming if you want to get involved with free to entry tournaments guaranteed money entrance or elite entries you can find a free agency tab there as well if you're looking for people to play with so again i'm a big proponent of the challenger system hopefully that has laid out some answers for you guys hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did again make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell so that way you know when my videos do pop up live until the next one hope you guys keep holding it down so long